Why is the greatest night in hip hop? I mean, pop. Greatest night in hip hop? In pop. On oh, pop? On Netflix. When they, how they made uh, We Are the World. Hmm. <laughs> greatest night, you said it's called Greatest Night of Pop. Yeah. Lionel Richard said, when he was at Michael Jackson's house, mm -hmm. they, they were writing the song. All he heard was something say, shh. Lionel said he turned around and the dog gone by the one. There's a python. <laughs> <laughs> Mike said, oh, he's, he's been missing. I'm so glad he came out. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Lionel Richard said he ran out of the house, man. <laughs> that Mike was different, man. Yes, sir. Inky Johnson. Oh, going for the championship and he ain't coming close. This might require taking notes, homie, listen close. Serendipity when you know you the one who chose. We going past the end zone, crushing every goal. I feel it in my enzymes and my chromosomes. If you ain't come outside to go hard, then go back home. I'm in my zone. If it ain't great, it's a better love alone. It's for the world. Put what we speaking on on speakerphone. Yeah. Wills, let them know what we be on. Serendipity, man. Tune in. What's going on, good people? Welcome to Serendipity. I'm Inky Johnson here with my brother. I'm Oka for News. What's happening, folks? Glad that y'all can join us for another adventure of pushing the culture. Yes, sir. How you feeling, Oak? Oh, uh, man. In this moment, I feel pretty good, boss. Yes, sir. I feel, uh, I feel inspired, man. Mm -hmm. You know, just being in this presence of, you know, the, the people behind the scenes and the work that they do. Absolutely. And the, the attention to detail, like, that inspires me. Yes, sir. Um, and and so you know, of course, you you that's your your gift anyway. You're always inspiring. Yet, uh, just noticing and picking up on just the chemistry that's in the room is respect. really inspiring. Respect, respect. And I'm gonna kick us off like we always do with a quote card from the Sugar Boo, and it reads: "Blessed are the happiness makers. Blessed are they who know how to shine. Blessed are the happiness makers. Blessed are they." who know how to shine. Talk to us, hey, doctor. Hey, I'm going to just be real with you, man. Baltimore lost to okay. the Chiefs. You know, no pressure, to, you know, however, whoever. But uh, there was a, a undercurrent of just a lot of, a lot of my friends, a mm -hmm. lot of my friends who I played ball with, uh, was really cheering for and pulling for Lamar Jackson, uh, even deep, deeper and more than football. Mm. And so the text threads start coming. You know, we on this text group. And I said, let me pull this up. So I pulled up the video and sent it to him. Yeah. The video was when Baltimore lost uh, to the Patriots. Okay. And Ray had the, uh, the speech in the, in the dressing room. Okay. And I sent, sent it out. And my partner, Kerry, he called, he called crime. Right, mm. because it, it hit him, and it it, it, it basically it inspired. He didn't call crying out of sadness. He called crying out of inspiration and out of just pure like just go get it, like an energy. Because mm. Ray said, you know, we lost. That's cool. We played together. We played as a team. But he said one thing: go make somebody smile. Yeah, man. Life is bigger than this. Life is bigger than whatever it is that you're going through. It's bigger than that. So you're, you have the opportunity. Every time you walk out your door, every time you pick up your phone, every time someone calls you, you have the opportunity to make someone smile. You have the opportunity to make someone's day. That is what life is about. Yes, sir. Uh, happiness makers. Happiness makers. I love yes, that quote. Happiness makers. Happiness makers. Right? You go help people. Yes, sir. You, you know, you walk down the street. Uh, whether someone needs it or not, Hey, it'll go ten dollars, man. Mm. Mm. Just because. Mm. But mm. it's gonna come back to you in tenfold. And I'm not just necessarily talking about the currency of ten dollars. Yeah. I'm talking about the spirit of giving, and then gotcha. the way in which it returns. Why? Because there's a there's a verse in a song that uh, you know and that where I'm from. We I went to Flint River Baptist Church, and and they my my dad, my uncle, my uh, granddad, they would always have this. Uh, this, this hymn, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Let me tell you what it is. 
Uh, guide me over that great Jehovah pilgrim through this barren land. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Guide but, me over that great Jehovah. <laughs> pilgrim through this barren land. But there's a verse in that that says, even me, Lord, even me, mm-hmm. may your blessings fall on me. Even me, which means balance me, yes, which sir. means the life is, life is about balance. Life is about reciprocity. Life is about giving and getting. Yes, sir. So when you make it your business to give, you don't know how much tenfold you're going to get back. Mm. Especially when you give without being asked to. Yes, sir. Yes. That's happy make, happiness makers. Mm. Give when you're not asked to give. Man, um, you know, when I think about happiness makers, oh, I was at a game um, a few weeks ago. And we chilling and we talking and one of my buddies, his daughter is one of the top soccer players in the nation, mm-hmm. right? Great player. Ended up tearing her ACL, so she been out. We just talking, chopping it up. And it was this big tournament that his daughter would have been at for all of the top soccer players in the country. But she couldn't attend because she's recovering from an ACL injury. So one of his daughter's friends went because she's also one of the top players in the country. And so while she was there, the friend, she was balling, doing amazing, right? And one of her parents went to her and was like, man, how is the experience? How's it going? And the kid, the friend said, man, the experience is awesome. It's amazing, right? But I wish Kai was here. Kai was the one that got hurt into her ACL. He's like, yeah, man, Kai recovering, doing a thing. She'll be here. She'll be back in no time. Like, why you acting so sad? Like, Kai gonna be back, Kai all good. You, you're doing great, right? Why are you so sad, you're doing great? The little girl said, yeah, but Kai lets everybody know they're doing great. Mm-hmm. She's, like, a happiness she's a happiness, happiness maker. maker. Like, yeah, I'm doing great, but if Kai was here, Kai's also one of the top in the nation, but Kai lets everybody know when they're doing great, Yeah. right? Like, if you check Simone's phone right now, who's behind the production and, if you check Oak's phone right now, if you check Keyshawn's phone right now, like you'll hear voice memos from me on the elliptical treadmill in the morning working out. Hey, what up? Championship, baby. How you feeling? Let's go. Let's go. Simone hit me back one morning like, hey, that got me up. I love that. Right? A happiness maker, man. Just putting out good energy. Every place I've ever went to speak on the face of this planet, I've left these cards in the room. People have come up to me like, ain't, ain't, you left your card, man. I'll be like, no, I left that. That's me sowing my seeds. They're like, oh, no, I'm keeping this. I'm taking this home. Happiness maker. Just being intentional. It's like when people speak to random acts of kindness, even though most people are not doing random acts of kindness. But when people speak to random acts of kindness, it's like, man, you making people happy. Like that clip on the internet that went viral from the guy Bonds Gives or something. And there was a homeless gentleman and he was out cleaning windows right outside. And the guy went up to him like, man, what are you doing? I just want to bring notoriety to what you're doing. And my man cleaning windows, he's like, man, I want my own cleaning company. They put it online, the power of social media, right? I know we speak about social media sometimes and people speak about the other side. But let's talk about the good side of it for a moment. Come on, come on, come on. And this video goes viral. From a homeless man being on the street cleaning windows. Just because somebody recorded him and asked him a couple of questions. Like, man, what what you want to do? My man, like, man, I want to start my own cleaning company. Somebody saw that. Hired him. He started his own cleaning company. My man said, man, because of what you did, 13 Dunkin' Donuts, my dude. 13 gave me the contract. They trusted me. They gave me the keys to come in after hours and clean the restaurant. 13, my dude. He said, they trusted me. Now I got to give back to this community and do it the right way. Happiness maker, right? Go make some people happy, yeah. man. Put out, put, put out positive energy and vibes. And the catch about that, Inc., is it does not require mm. money. It does not require thing. currency. Mm. It requires a heart. Yes, sir. That we all have. Yes, so sir. it's a decision. Talk about Again, it. remember, we said our mantra is... Championship and do what you want to do. Mm. So doing what you want to do. Yes, sir. If that leaves people better off, you're a happiness maker. Mm. I love it. I'm picking it up.
Do what you want to do. I'm not saying ensure that you become a happiness maker. I'm not, in, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying from the seed of it, do what you want to do. Bruh was cleaning the windows. Why? Because he wanted to. Because mm. at the, the, the root of it, the rat killing of the matter is authenticity. Mm. He was being authentic. Right. He wasn't out there to get something. He was out there to give something. Mm. If you go out there to get something, if you go out in the world to get something, then you've limited what you're going to receive. Mm. But if you go out into the world and with all your heart, with the intention of I'm going to give the best of me, guaranteed that what you get in, in return will blow your mind. Mm. Picking it up. Picking it up. Um, okay, I want to dive into something that we hear a lot about um, every single day in every facet of life. Um, the process, mm -hmm. right? We often hear that, man. Trust the process, respect the process, right? Embrace the process. Yeah. When you hear the process, where does your mind go? What do you think about the process? Uh, my mind goes first to failure. Mm -hmm. That because you you don't get a chance to really embrace and trust the process when you're getting the results that you want on a day-to-day -day basis. Gotcha. Right? When we're saying the process, it's when you take an L. Because I just told you about the Ravens, right? When Ray Lewis made that uh, speech, mm -hmm. the next year they won the Super Bowl. Mm. 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 The very next year they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. They beat San Francisco in New Orleans, right? So trust in the process means uh, uh, ask for the failure, ask for the rain, ask for the, for the thunderstorm so that you get an opportunity to, to gauge where you are in your ability to trust the process, to respect the process, and to embrace the process. When it's all good is what? Mm. All good. All good, yeah. Right. But when it's not, that's when, what, what Dr. King say? You say it all the time. What, what, what did you say? The measure of man is not, not where you stand. stand. in times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. That's the process. Mm -hmm. That's what the process means. Yes, when sir. you get knocked down, when you get beat up, when you don't feel like it, and you do it anyway, you believe in it anyway, you believe in it anyway, mm -hmm. you have the faith and you carry forth, and you walk, and you still have the hope, and you still have the love in what you're doing, even when the, the product doesn't look like it's coming to fruition, and you do it anyway. See, I come from a family that, that uh, were farmers. Yes, sir. They dropped the seed in, in a few weeks, right? March, beginning of, you know, Easter and all that in, in the springtime. Gotcha. You don't see the harvest until August. Mm. You don't see the harvest until October. Yeah. It rains, it doesn't look like it's gonna come to fruition. Mm. The process is, what about the beginning of April when ain't nothing sprouted up? Yeah. But you still go out there and still till the soil. Mm. You still do the work, right? It's in, in teaching. I taught y'all, bruh, 1999 to about February, around your birthday, February of 2000, before I could really get a grasp of they getting it. Yeah. But what if I had stopped in November? Mm. What if I gave up in November? But because I was taught by my mentor, my Baba, that you invest in the process. You don't invest in the product. Mm. The process is just doing the work. Yes, sir. Just doing the work, doing the work, doing the work. Right? Whatever comes of it, who cares? Mm. Mm. Who cares? <laughs> Because you're going to be made better. You're going to be made better, folks, when you invest yourself in doing something even when you don't feel like it. Doing something even when you're sick. Even doing something even when it doesn't feel like it's going to result into anything. That is what makes you better. Mm. Mm. You getting what you want doesn't. You getting what you want is just a, it's the product is just like, oh, okay. Now we got to move on to something else. 
That's all. That's that's what picking it up. The process, uh, investing in the process, mean respecting the process. I'm sorry, Inve- uh, investing in the process, uh, respecting the process, and, and embracing the process means. Yes, sir. You have to divorce yourself of the product. Steph Curry doesn't shoot the ball because he thinks it's going in. <laughs> LeBron, uh, or, or or better yet, Kobe went and played because of the joy of the process, not the joy of the product. If you invest in the product, you're going to be let down every time. Yes, indeed. If you invest in the product, you're going to be let down every time. Why? Because you can't control it. Mm. As you said, we control the controllables. Definitely. What is controlling the controllables? Mm. The process. That's why it's so important. You have authority and autonomy over the process. Yes, indeed. It says the process is the voice that speaks to accountability and ownership. Mm, better own it. Please own it. The process is the voice that speaks to accountability and ownership. The process is also being fully present in the moment, understanding that really that's all you got. Right. And so I wrote something in my notepad, man. It said, think about what you can do today and exist fully in the present. The process provides us a way. Follow the process, not the prize. And it spoke to when you have a plan and you have a process, when opposition, adversity, challenges, uncertainty pops up, the problem doesn't look as big. The adversity doesn't look as big. The challenges don't look as big when you got a plan and a process in place. Now, when you don't got a plan and a process in place, adversity and opposition shows up, uncertainty shows up, problems look real big. Yeah. Adversity looks real big. You forget about the sacrifice. You forget about everybody else's work. You forget about the long hours. You forget about the vision. You forget about the mission because you don't have a plan or process, right? The process makes you stick to whatever it is that you're doing. Right. When I think process, like when I hear the word process, the thing that comes to mind more than any other thing is finish the task. Mm -hmm. Right. Finish. Understanding that it will be a process, but the process is guidance. So when things come up along the way, they don't look as big because I know at the end of the day, I'm following my process. I say it all the time. When a winner and a loser start something, they both got the exact same goal. Two boxers get in the ring, both of them going to think they train well enough. Both of them. When they first get, both of them going to feel like, man, I've been training, been lifting law, I've been doing my thing. But Mike Tyson said it, everybody got, got a plan until they, they get, get punched it. in the mouth. And yep. one person, when they get punched in the mouth, they're going to sit down in that stool in the corner, they trainer going to be talking to them, and they ain't going to hear nothing they saying. Right? Everything going out of the window. They looking in the sky, they looking for God, or their ego going to be in the way, and they going to want to trust their own ambition or whatever. The other person is going to say, man, you know what? He caught me with a nice blow. He got me. Right? I, I let my hands down. I didn't see that one coming. I didn't have my shoulder in the right place. He going to sit down on the stool in the corner, and his trainer going to start talking to him, and they going to say, hey, doc, trust our process. The problem, it ain't that deep. The adversity, it ain't that deep. See it as it is, but not worse than it is. Trust our process, right? Do what we do, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why does one set goals, Oh, Um, Some people need to be focused. Mm -hmm. Some people need uh, a direction, right? Because there is, is really, you have to understand the type of person that you are. Say that again. Let, no, you have to understand the type of person that you are. Mm-hmm. If you're the type of person that uh, you have to have things in order, boom, 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 like this, cool, set your goals. I'm a person that I don't set goals. There's nothing about me that's going to set a goal. If I set a goal, I can accomplish it, but on the backside of it, it's not going to yield me a whole lot of... Uh, Worth is not going to yield me a whole lot of anything. Why? Because that's not the type of person I am. I'm not being true to myself. So I don't go out and say, well, I want to I wanna impact 30 young people. I want to win a championship. I want to do this, that, and the third. That's not me. 
because I know who I am. I'm the type of person to say, I wake up in the morning and whatever comes at me, I bet you I'm going to figure it out. I graduated middle school. I can make it work, period, point blank. I can pivot in an instant. That's the type of person I am. Now, if you are a person who have to set goals to get to where you want to go, then do that, right? But for a person like me, who I'm a CCN type people, what I mean by that, people who are, are in, have the gift and the ilk of inspiration, who have the, 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 the fire to inspire and impact people, because people are ever-changing, situations are ever-changing, it makes no sense for me to set a goal, right? It, because the goal simply is to impact you, to impact me, to become better, to increase my capacity. That's the goal, and I don't have to, I don't have to set that goal because that's always the goal, because it's the gift. Now, someone else, they have a start and they have a finish. For me, I look at life and in a cyclical manner, it never stops. That's why, okay, you know, we win a chip. I don't care. We lose a chip. I'm hurt, but I still don't care. But what I care about is building relationships, what I care about. So for me, setting goals is not fruitful. But for you, you have to understand that if it is your thing, then set your goal and strive for it. Fight for it. Don't let nothing stop you from getting to that place where you want to get to. Now, once you get there, does it bring you joy? Does it bring you peace? Because you have some people that set goals and they reach it and it doesn't bring them amount of peace. Kevin Durant. Mm. Kevin Durant is MVP. Kevin Durant has won two championships. Then he left Golden State. Why? Because that's not his thing. Mm. His thing is he wants to just ball. He wants to just um, increase his capacity to go out and let me see how well I can perfect this game of basketball. Hmm. That's his thing. Yeah. Someone else's thing, like, who just, I just want to win. Hmm. Okay? You set your goals and you go accomplish that. And then once you get to that accomplishment, you're at peace. This is how you know, this is how you know if setting a goal is your thing. If you reach your goal and you're at peace. If you reach your goal and you're still unfulfilled, then setting goals is not for you. Hmm. But if you reach your goal and you're like, yes, all right, let me go on to the next challenge. That That's your lane. Hmm. Walk in that lane. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a goal person, man. Um, for me, goals put things into proportion, right? I set goals more so so everything I do can be at the service of something purposeful. Mm -hmm. So I need goals, right? I gotta get up and I gotta chase the dragon, right? Whatever it may be. And so for me, like when I get to that goal, I'm like, bet, cool, let's take it up a notch. Like he just spoke to, right? When certain people set goals, it's like, boom, what's the new goal? That's the type of person I am. I set goals, put things into proportion. I need things to be serviceful, serviceful. So when I do set the goal, I can go and work to become a better person. That's just how I'm wired and how I do things, right? It's not setting a goal, then I accomplish it. I'm like, all right, cool, that work went for nothing. I'm setting it and I'm looking at it as, like I spoke to, a journey, right, of why I need to become a certain type of person or why I need to accomplish something or just to work to the specifics of certain areas <clears throat> in my life. And so sometimes the goal can revolve around communication for me with my children. I could set a goal of, hey man, today, I wanna make sure I say this, I do this, so I can work toward being a better communicator as a father. I could set a goal of, hey man, today I wanna make sure I write this note for my wife so I can work toward becoming a little bit better in an area that I feel I may have a deficiency as a husband. And then once I do that, all right, cool. What's the new goal? And so for me, like it brings things into proportion, but also it makes, it makes sure that things that I'm working for and toward are at the service of something purposeful, right? And so for me, I gotta, I gotta have them so I can get up and chase that dragon, man. That's, that's, and e either way, that's the, uh, that's the gift of inspiration that you have. Um, how we get to it, how we manifest it, is, you know, our own unique way. Yes, sir. But the, the commonality is what we said was 
how are we going to impact others? Definitely. That's the gift. Definitely. Right? Definitely. You know what I'm saying? What you're doing day in and day out and going and impacting people. And I think what some other people are doing day in and day out, going and impacting people, that, that's the gift of inspiration. For sure. You have people who have the gift of helps. You have people who have the gift of uh, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the, all of these spiritual gifts, once you understand what your gift is and then hone in on how you manifest your gift, that's where your peace happens. Yes, sir. That's where your understanding of who you are in relation to this way big old universe. Mm. Right? I'm so picking it up. So that that is where um I think where you have you are ahead of the curve, bro. Appreciate you though. Okay, I was reading um a story about Harry Belafonte and the King family, Martin Luther King, Coretta mm -hmm. Scott King. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was calling and talking to him over the phone about just different situations and issues. And something came up within the family. And they were saying like, man, right now, priority wise, we can't do that. We got some things going on at the house we need to do with the kids, this, that, and the third. And said at the time, Harry Belafonte was like, well, why y'all ain't got a house cleaner? And say he thought to himself like, why well, they ain't got a house? They doing this great work, man. Why somebody ain't? And he said he got him a house cleaner. Not necessarily because they needed it. He said they probably didn't need it. It probably wasn't that deep to him. He said he got him a house cleaner so they can have a peace of mind with the work that they were doing. Mm -hmm. I was like, Shh. Man. That's, that's 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 some compassion. That's some seeing man. beyond the obvious. That's some seeing beyond the obvious stuff right there. You know man. what I'm saying? Talk about it. I bro. mean, keeping the big picture, like uh Elder Belafonte knew the impact that the King family was having on the culture. Mm. And he, I, I could surmise that he felt like one way that I can push and keep the main thing the main thing is to offer this service. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Definitely. So he, he's, he's not looking at it from a, from a personal standpoint. He's looking at it from the big picture standpoint of how can I, what, what piece can I play to help the whole masses of people. Mm. And that little small thing right there. Yeah, man. Of let me see how I can get their mind off of this and keep it on the big picture of pushing the culture, yes. of civil rights, of uh, black and brown people having equal opportunities in life, right? Definitely. So those little things right there. And I, the reason I really love that story ain't Mm -hmm. It's because there's so many people as we embark upon this uh this month of what we call create history, mm -hmm. uh the creation of black Talk history. About it. Talk about um, it. Talk about it. We we have and have missed the story and the narrative of so many people. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right? We've all almost made it cliche-ish mm -hmm. with the, you know, we can probably count on our fingers and toes the number of people we talk about. Right, Definitely. the number of people that we teach about, but what I want, and and I guess this is how it evolved. I want you to think about your grandmother. I want you to think about your grandfather, and they are Black history. Mm. They are American history, regardless of color, regardless of creed. They are the fabric that made America, America, that made you, you. Not what society tells us, right. not what school has told us. Your, what was your great grandmother's favorite color? Mm. What made her happy? What got your grandfather excited? See, my granddaddy loved just, just playing uh, anything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I take that with me because. So that drives me to, to find my joy because mm. I knew that he found his joy mm. and I knew what his joy was. So I've been on this quest to figure out what is my joy in life. Man, Oak, you just, you just made me think about some, um, you know, when we all, me, you, uh, my wife, like all of us, all of us used to do the uh, pre-COVID. You know, when we used to do the back-to-school drives, mm -hmm. when all of us be at yeah, Kirkwood yeah, Gym, yeah. 
We giving book bags to the kids. We giving different stuff. You talking, having a session. You know, I'm talking, having a session in the community that, you know, we came up in. And I'll never forget, um, one day I'm standing there at the book bag table. We handing out the backpacks to the kids. And, you know, I didn't know that much about um, my father's mother, right? I knew a lot about, you know, my mother's mother. I didn't know that much about my father's mother. All I used to hear my mother's mother say was she was such a great, sweet, kind woman. And one day as we're giving out the backpacks to the kids during our back to school drive, my father, like he don't speak a lot about things that bring emotions, right? Like cool, funny, yeah. you yeah. know, all of that, but things that bring emotion, he don't really speak about. You catch him at a basketball game now, it, you're going, going in. You gonna catch that tornado, <laughs> you understand? But he said, uh, man, ain't, like you, you remind me of my mom. Like wow, you got the spirit wow, of my mom. Wow. He said, my mom used to work at the, the pencil company in Kirkwood, and she used to always, every year, take pencils, take paper, and give them to all the kids in the community. Right, that same spirit. I never knew that until he told me that. All I knew from my mother's mother was, she would always say she was such a sweet, mm -hmm. kind lady. And that day when my father said that, I never knew in terms of my mom is a given lady, yeah. right? But that spirit just goes down our lineage in such a way to where if my father never would have told me that story, I never would have knew that. My, my grandma used to go down the street in Kirkwood giving out paper and pencils, mm -hmm. right, to kids. It was somebody out there that knew that probably used to see me and be like, man, that cat doing what? His grandma used to do in a certain yeah. fashion, yeah. right? And so when you spoke to that, I'm like, nah, that's dope, Listen, man. That's listen, dope. man, but DNA is not just physical. Yeah. DNA is not just physical. Yeah. If you are of the ilk that we're from, uh, DNA is also spiritual. So the things that you do, the things that you think, that's why it's so important that you connect up with your folks. That's why it's so important that you listen and and understand the lineage from which you come. Like for me, the first time I got it was when my mom, um, she she did uh, uh, summer, uh, what is it called? Vacation, va vacation Bible, Bible school. school. Yeah, yeah, yes. absolutely. And I saw her interact and, and, and take care of other people's young folks, mm -hmm. right? That's when it clicked. Because that sparked something in me that was, it was already there, but it just sparked it mm. to where this is all I want to do in life. Yes, I just want to impact, take care of young people, mm. period, point blank. You know, I was in college and there were two of my, my uh, cousins, friends that were younger than me and they, they were teenagers, right? And they had, you know, they, they ended up having, um, having a baby. So I would leave Atlanta, go to the country, and keep the babies overnight so they could just go out and enjoy and have a good time. Mm. Because, yeah, that was for them, but it was also for me. It fed my spirit. I just love kids, man. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So seeing my mom do it, it basically just validated the, the spirit that I had in me. It sparked it and it validated. Mm. So it's so important on so, so many different levels that you get to know your folks. Listen to them. If there are people in your family that you can talk to and just uh, ask them. Like, that's why I always say, like, what was her favorite color? What was his favorite color? What did he like to do? Like those very intimate details. So that is going to tell you a whole lot about who you are or it will explain why you do the things you do. I'm picking that up. I'm picking that up. Now, I want to segue real quick, man, um, into this thing called patience. Oh. All right. It says patience, the thing that goes beyond hustle and hard work, the discipline of patience, the thing that goes beyond hustle and hard work. Right. Because we all talk about hustle. We talk about working hard. We talk about grinding mm -hmm. this, that and the third. But nobody talks to you about patience. Nobody speaks about that patience because in the patience, that's where you're going to make it or you're going to break. Right. Let's speak about that patience. Okay. Um, the lack of patience will kill a community. 
Yes, indeed. In a physical sense, if you don't have the patience to let the collard greens grow mm. and, and, and come to full fruition, then you won't get the full harvest to feed the full community. Mm. Right? If That's you right. don't have the patience to let a thing manifest fully, right, even within you, mm. then you're not going to get the fullness of the lesson. Right? If you're going, it's, it's almost, it's like, if you want a thing so bad and you, you're anxious for it to happen and you feel like you got it, I got it, I got it, and you go, but you don't have the, the, uh, the character to yeah, keep you is. there, as we talked about, right? Yes, sir. That's, that's, the, that's the residue of a lack of patience mm. because you're not ready for it on the, on the spiritual end, on the, on the character end. So what you're going to do is you're going to end up setting yourself back. Although you may two, take two steps forward very quickly, you're going to take four steps back even quicker. Talk about it. So what patience does, it allows you to see the fullness of a thing. Picking it up. So you plant some turnip greens in April. Planting them greens. And, and thinking you're going to pull them up in the end of May. Yeah, you may. They all right. But you missed the whole harvest of all the turnip greens at the end of June. Because mm. you wait July, now they're going to burn up. Mm. So you got to pull them up before, before July hit. You see what I'm saying? I but guess. if you pull them up too early, then you don't get the fullness of it. Mm. You don't get the fullness of what God got for you. Because of your lack of patience. Fullness, what God got for you. I'm going to read some of y'all, man, about patience. My wife, shout out to my wife, man. She got us these cards, so yeah, I'm finna plug it. My wife. Babe, look, thank you. <laughs> but it says, the discipline of patience, right? It prevents us from insufficient information. The discipline of patience from picking the wrong option. The discipline of patience from going too soon. The discipline of patience from rushing people to the wrong conclusion, the discipline of patience, right? Because when you're not patient, you can make a lot of mistakes, man. Like I told you, the quote said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap. You judge each day by the seeds that you sow, right? When you sow a seed, you gotta be what? Oh, you gotta be patient, patient. right? The third one. Yeah. What was the third? By people. From Russian people to the wrong conclusion. <laughs> And in, 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 the, in the business of com, uh, communication, in the business of relationships, relationships generally deteriorate because of a lack of patience. Mm. Meaning, I'm looking and expecting something from you, and you don't give it to me in the time in which I think you should. Then now we begin to uh, erode. Mm. Right? Like, honestly, okay, boom, we finished. We finished season two. I'm like, all right, okay, we finna move, we moving, we moving. And whatever, all the things that happened and transpired, I could have been like, damn, what's up, eh? Yeah. Or patience to there's something that has to, that has to manifest, that has to transpire. Definitely. Right? Because it's not time. The time happens when the time is supposed to happen. Because we can't speed up nor slow down the flow of the river. So, Patience. Patience, man. Patience. The thing is supposed to happen. It, no, it is going to happen when it's supposed to happen. That's it. Whatever it may be. That's it. That's it. That's it's it. going to happen when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. I, um... I said today, man, and we could get ready to land the plane. Um, a cat asked me, he said, man, it looks as if how you navigated what happened to you in the place that you're in now, it looks as if you've always been like a strong, optimistic, positive individual. I said, I haven't always been that way. I said, as a matter of fact, I encountered uncharted territory in my life to where I felt as if I didn't have a connection with God. I said, the thing that drove my belief, my optimism, my hope, my faith was, it was like Wi-Fi. I always felt as if I had a connection with God. No matter what circumstance I was in, oh, it was just something in me that always felt like 
God got me. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I'm going to do something great. Two-bedroom, house, 14 people. Man, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to be the first one in my family, right, transferring back to Crim. Nah, I'm going to make it happen. Like, I always felt like that. And for the first time in my life, when I moved back to Atlanta after my injury and I was in between trying to find a career before speaking, that was the first time in my life I felt as if God didn't hear me. Because nothing I was trying was working. Mm. Every door got closed. And I remember feeling as if like, man, God, like you don't, you don't hear me no more. Like you ain't rocking. But your boy ain't got no connection no more. Right? And I remember my wife saying to me, Inc, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm good. She know me though. Yeah. She been knowing me since I was 10. She said, you know, it's okay to say you're not okay. I was like, nah, I'm good. On the inside, I really wasn't. And so the journey to go meet Oprah and give Oprah my book. People have heard the story. It's on YouTube. You can check it out and look it up. People always say to me, hey, ain't did anything happen when you met Oprah? Like, did anything come of that moment? When you gave her your book, anything, like what happened? I said, nothing came of that moment, but everything came of that moment. My faith was fortified because of that moment. My hope, my belief, my optimism was restored because I left Atlanta, Georgia to do something that everybody thought was impossible. That was to meet Oprah and give her the book because I was in uncharted territory. It wasn't to meet Oprah and get on a show. It was, I'm finna do something so outlandish, I'm gonna put my faith on trial. And God put me front and center, put the book in her hand. So when the book hit her hand and I saw her, that was a level of confirmation that after that moment, I was like, I got my connection back, right? And I say this to people often. Her security guard said something to me that day, and I'll never forget it. He said, hey, man, come here. Let me talk to you. He said, I'm not saying anything is going to come of this moment. I just want you to know what just happened never happens. So I ain't promise you that what just happened never happens. Usually I'll go up, clear them out. They'll send it somewhere that you'll never get. What just happened never happens. Right? And I say to people often, man, when you find yourself in uncharted territory, when it seems as if you're not being guided, when you, it seems as if things are not making sense, every next level of your life demands a new version of you. Mm-hmm. You got to give something up in order to go up. You can't be who you used to be and who you're going to be at the same time. Yeah. You got to change something. Right? We trying to accomplish stuff and we trying to hold on to stuff. Like something got to give. We got to give up something. And so always remember that, man, on the journey to what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to do and who you're trying to become. I, I, I think it, when you were saying that, um, the connection started to flicker. You know, you're saying you had lost connection like with the Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. It started to flicker. The Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. But the Bluetooth lose connection yeah. too. Okay. Um, the, the, the connection started to flicker when you decided to get in the car mm-hmm. and drive. Talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So because there was something purposeful. When you're doing something and you don't feel purposeful, that's when you feel disconnected. Mm. So whatever it is in life Fact. that you want to do, what you feel like doing, what, what drives you, what feeds you, what excites you, what invigorates you, that is what you should be doing. That's why I keep saying do what you want to do because that begins to, to reconnect you with your source, with your energy source, with your spiritual source, with your physical source. Mm. Do, what, do what it is that's on your heart. Yes, sir. That, because you said, you know what? I'm going to take a leap of faith. Mm-hmm. Get in this car and drive to Chicago. Yeah. It's the drive. It's the journey there that made the connection. What happened at the end was, okay, the light came on. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't have never happened if you would never got in the car. There it is. You made the decision to do something that was purposeful, that was meaningful to who? You. Mm. Talk about it. Now, once you decided to do that, then now the universe took care of everything else. Mm-hmm. That's so. That's so. But it, the universe is always waiting on you. The universe is always waiting on you. Yes, sir. The universe is always waiting on you to walk in your purpose, to walk in your power. Mm. That's it. Like, th- and then that's when you begin to find your gift, manifest your gift, hone in on your gift, mm. to find your, the reason why you were sent through your mother's womb. Mm. 
when you find yourself down, when you find yourself feeling almost depressed or whatnot, find your purpose. How do you find your purpose? Do what you want to do. Mm. And then it begins to build and build and build, and it becomes like a snowball. Mm. You're like, golly, wow. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, it, it was crazy. You, yeah. you, because he said this never happens. Yeah, definitely. But it could not. It could not have happened if you didn't start with the glimmer of hope, mm. with the faith that you were going to accomplish something, because of the love that you had for yourself. Yes, indeed. Hope, faith, love. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm going to land a plane with this, Oak. Um, our word, man, is, is sacrifice, right? And I'll go, then I'll let you put us on the ground. I firmly believe sacrifice is a prerequisite for growing. In any area of your life you want to grow, you're going to have to sacrifice something, right? Sacrifice is a prerequisite for growing. Land a plane for us, doctor. Sacrifice is... Uh, it will get tough and it deters people mm. because sometimes you may feel the sacrifice isn't worth it. So what you have to train your mind to do is to understand that it is not necessarily a sacrifice, but a choice. You make the choice to be your best self. You make the choice to get up in the morning when you don't feel like it. You make the choice to go home and take care of your kids when you should or when you could have been at work. You make the choice to take care of or spend time with your significant other when you could be out doing something else, going to make money or whatever it may be. Or you make the choice to go out and make the money instead of going home or what, you know, doing the other thing. Like this, it's a duality. So understand that every time you make a choice, it's a sacrifice. But you have the power, you have the ability to control what choice you make. And if you call it a sacrifice, great. But if that sacrifice begins to take you away from what you understand to be who you are, what makes you happy, what brings you joy, and what brings you peace, then that sacrifice, that sacrifice, that price of that sacrifice is too much. That's how you will know that the sacrifice is worth it. If it's bringing you peace, if it's bringing you joy, if it's bringing you satisfaction, and it's making other people's better. Mm. Picking it up, man. We appreciate your time. We out of here. Peace. Peace.